good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Tony Roskilly. I'm a professor of energy systems at Durham University, and I lead the EPSRC network for hydrogen fueled uh, transportation. It's a, a series of uh, webinars that we've been running as part of the network to cover all the different aspects associated with hydrogen research and development work in uh, the transport sector. So um, this week, uh, we are welcoming two speakers who will present the challenges of hydrogen storage and accelerating the take up of hydrogen for transport. I'll introduce our uh, first speaker, uh, Professor Gavin Walker. Gavin is the uh, chair of uh, sustainable energy uh, in Nottingham University. He's previously been a partner of the UK Research Council Supergen Hydrogen Consortium um, and involved in EU projects, uh, high train and high cones, and is a UK expert for the IEA um, task 17 and 22. That's both on hydrogen storage materials. Uh, Gavin is a, a member of the advisory board of this network, so it's uh, very uh, nice of him to uh, also present uh, today. So, Gavin, over to you. Okay, thanks, Tony. Thanks for that introduction. Um, and so thanks very much also for um, inviting me to give a talk uh, about hydrogen storage for transport applications uh, and some of the research that we're doing at uh, Nottingham uh, into these types of solutions. Um, it's going to be a little bit broader than that, because uh, with our interests in investigating metal hydrides, then um, you can also use metal hydrides for compression as well. Uh, and so you're going to see an example of that and where we can use the metal hydrides a bit more smartly and actually have them as a dual energy store. And uh, you'll see what I mean as I go through the, uh, the presentation. So the people who have been working with me uh, on the various projects that I'm going to introduce are listed here in the interests of time. And given that there will be my slides available to anybody who's interested, I, I shan't go through the, the individuals. But just to give a brief overview of some of the work that we are doing and to give you an idea of the range of research that we're doing here uh, at Nottingham within the hydrogen research team. So we're uh, very interested in discovery of new materials. San Lian Ling is leading the materials modeling work and um, also looking at how machine learning can help us with the discovery of new materials with desired properties, not just with metal hydrides, but also looking at solid oxide fuel cells and uh, electrolyzers. Also looking at developing a range of different types of metal hydrides, ideally ones that are working around ambient temperature and uh, have high capacities. And so some of these are, are traditional um, metal alloys, some are complex hydrides, and we're also getting into new types of materials. So a lot of interest in the area with high entropy alloys. With the applications, then um, traditionally stationary storage, uh, and I'll give you some examples of that later, uh, we are also looking at where are there opportunities with metal hydrides for uh, onboard vehicle energy stores. And then also, as I alluded to before, you can use metal hydrides for solid state hydrogen compressors. Um, won't go into this talk, but um, you can use metal hydrides as thermal batteries and for thermal energy storage. Then across the research group, we've got a range of facilities and demonstrators for the various projects that we've been involved with. Outside of the hydrogen storage group, then um, we've also got interest in with Ming Li's work in fuel cells and electrolyzers. Um, also looking at how additive manufacturing can be used uh, in a variety of hydrogen technologies. Ian Masquerie's from our additive manufacturing group. Then on the combustion side with vehicles, Alistair Kens, he's investigating hydrogen and ammonia as uh, zero carbon energy vectors with combustion engines, internal combustion engines for uh, heavy goods vehicles and also marine uh, applications as well. And Don Giddings is interested in um, the impact of hydrogen in natural gas 
uh, on burner technologies and also looking at burners that are uh, using 100% pine as well and the design of those efficient burners. And then lastly, uh, on the life cycle analysis, John McKechnie, very interested in the resource use for these variety of technologies, what the environmental and economic impact is there, and then also looking at the impact from cradle to grave uh, as you look at uh, zero carbon technology. So it's not just with hydrogen, also looking at other competing uh, zero uh, carbon technology. So first of all, introduce you to metal hydrides because I suspect most of you uh, have not come across metal hydrides before. Um, before you get too worried, I'm not going to look at any of these equations at all. Um, so with a, a metal hydride, then it could be a single metal or it could be an alloy. And um, the uh, metal um, uh, is designed so that it's got uh, a high affinity for hydrogen. And so it will react with the hydrogen to form what we call a metal hydride. So it's forming a new compound. When it reacts to form that new compound, then it will release heat. It's an exothermic process. And that's how we can use these materials as a thermal energy store. Also, as we are releasing hydrogen from the metal hydride and getting the hydrogen back for either a fuel cell or uh, for combustion, that's an endothermic process. And so it means that the bed is cooling. The important thing there is that gives us some cooling power and that's the thing I want you to try and remember when we look at the dual use for hydrogen stores with transport application, that we can do some cooling as well as providing hydrogen for motive power through either an internal combustion engine or a fuel cell. The other interesting thing about metal hydrides is in their uptake uh, characteristics. So uh, this is an isotherm, the temperature is kept the same. And we're looking at what happens as we increase pressure. As we increase pressure, then very little hydrogen gets into the metal hydride. But then when you reach what's called its plateau pressure, we start getting lots of hydrogen. And so the hydrogen content starts to rapidly increase with no further increase, significant increase in pressure of the system delivering hydrogen to the metal hydride. Then once we've filled up all the available sites for hydrogen occupation, as we increase pressure, we actually start to get very little extra capacity, hydrogen capacity in the material because we've occupied all the easy to occupy um, locations. So you get this characteristic isotherm curve uh, going through a plateau. Now that plateau pressure becomes uh, important to us when we're looking at the operation of a metal hydride as a uh, hydrogen store on board a vehicle because this is the pressure at which uh, the metal hydride is going to be delivering hydrogen to the fuel cell. So if the fuel cell needs hydrogen at four bar, we need to make sure that this plateau pressure is at or above four bar so that we are delivering the majority of the hydrogen from the metal hydride store um, at the pressure required by the fuel cell. Once you start to drop down this knee, you're going to get to a point where you no longer have enough pressure in your vessel to still continue to supply hydrogen to the fuel cell. The other thing for us as a, a hydrogen store is that when we want to recharge the material, then we just need to be at a pressure above that. So again, if our plateau pressure is about four bar for the fuel cell, that just means that we need a pressure over four bar and we will start to recharge the sites until we fill it all up. So quite often we are using pressures of just 30 bar uh, and that means that we can get to probably 98% uh, capacity of the metal hydride. And then given that we can't get the last bits of hydrogen out, then it does mean that we can utilize probably about 90% of the hydrogen uh, in the hydrogen storage vessel when we're looking at solid state storage. The other interesting uh, characteristic is that these are those characteristic isotherms. If we increase the pressure of the bed, sorry, if we increase the temperature of the bed, then the plateau pressure starts to increase. So as we go from cooler blue to warmer orange and then hot red area, we're increasing that plateau pressure. So 
this means that um, we can actually, if we take the plateau pressures at the different temperatures and plot log of pressure against one over T, we get what's called a Van Hoff plot. Um, don't worry too much again about the equations off to the right on that slide. I'm not going to be testing you on those at the end of the presentation. The interesting thing for us is that it gives us a, a linear correlation. So it means that we can predict what's going to be the pressure uh, at different um, bed temperatures. So that's useful in understanding the operation of the store. But the other thing that it's really helpful for is that it means that if we store uh, or charge up a bed with hydrogen at ambient temperature and then increase the temperature of the bed, then actually we will get the hydrogen back at a higher pressure. And so that explains the theory behind why we can also use metal hydrides as compressors. And I'll come on to um, some of the work that we've done there. So let's look at use of um, metal hydride as a hydrogen store. And with those hydrogen basics that I've already given you, you'll start to understand where some of the advantages are of a metal hydride store. So if we've got an electrolyzer generating hydrogen, that will typically be generating hydrogen about 30 bar. Uh, and as I've indicated, you can then start charging up the um, metal hydride, sorry, the metal with hydrogen forming that metal hydride. There's no compressor actually required in the system to get very high uh, levels of hydrogen storage, compact storage. Then when you want the hydrogen back, um, this store will be starting off at 30 bar, if that's what it was charged up at. Uh, and then the, uh, it will continue delivering hydrogen at the plateau pressure. So again, we design the material to have the desired plateau pressure that the fuel cell system needs to be able to operate. And um, you can just see here that if we compare the volumetric energy density, um, that's hydrogen density actually in kilograms of hydrogen per meter cubed, then it comparing our metal hydrogen store to that of a 200 bar store, then we've got twice the density. So it's half the volume from a uh, 200 bar storage cylinder. So two advantages there, lower pressures are required um, and it's uh, more compact storage. Third advantage, no compressor needed in the system as well. So we've been doing a lot of work um, looking at different types of materials. So I'll just give an example of one alloy that we've been looking at. Uh, and this is based on an AB2 alloy. Uh, we've been playing around with the um, chemical composition and looking at what happens as we go off stoichiometry for the composition. And rather than worrying too much about the chemistry, then what this graph is showing is that actually as we play around with the types of metals that are in the uh, AB2 alloy, then we can tailor the um, uh, plateau pressure for the alloy. And we're at plateau pressures ranging from about a couple of bar going up to almost 10 bar. And we can, through the selection of the types of alloys, go up to very high pressures, or very low pressures, should we wish. So with um, this AB2 alloy that we designed at Nottingham, then one of the things we we're wanting to do is try and beat the current commercially uh, available AB2 alloy, which is called hydro hydroloisy. And uh, with our formulations, then we've managed to get a 30% higher uh, working capacity than the hydroloisy. So we've got a working capacity of 1.8 weight percent. And the other thing that we were focusing on was trying to make it cheaper than the commercially available alloy. So um, the hydroloy C coming in at 45 pounds per kilogram of alloy. Our one is coming in at nine pounds because we're avoiding expensive metals that are in hydroloy C. And then that means if we look at um, the energy stored with the calorific value of hydrogen, then uh, for our EB2 alloy, that's only 13 pounds per kilowatt hour. Uh, whereas with hydroloy C, that's 81 pounds per kilowatt hour. So quite an improvement. So we are looking at ways in which we can use that alloy for a variety of applications. Now with metal hydrides, they are heavier solutions than with compressed hydrogen um, or with liquid hydrogen. So primarily we were looking at um, the use of hydrogen, uh, metal hydrides for stationary applications. 
and that stationary application could be with a refueler. So if um, at the refueling station, if the bulk of your hydrogen is stored as compressed gas, then actually work we did with ITM Power um, shows that actually uh, there's a cushion level of gas within your com um, compressed hydrogen store of about 70%. So 70% of the hydrogen that you have stored at your refueler is never actually used. You're only using the hydrogen that is at much higher pressures. Because with metal hydrides, you can actually utilize most of the hydrogen um, stored in the vessel. That can lead to um, an improvement in the amount of hydrogen that you're using. Work that ITM did then looking at the characteristics of our materials was showing that for a plant that was going from uh, 80 kilograms a day to 200 kilograms a day, then actually with just compressed gas storage, uh, might be limited to uh, 26 kilograms uh, available and, and refueling only four cars a day. Whereas with a hydrogen metal hydride store, then that could increase the number of cars being refueled up to 124 cars uh, a day. Uh, also, because it was at a lower pressure, then hazard areas were uh, reduced for the uh, hydrogen fueling station. Now, can we utilize hydrogen on board vehicles? Uh, what would be the advantage? There's a weight penalty. So that's got to come into consideration when we look at the types of vehicles that we might use it for. But what this graph shows us is that actually, if we concentrate on the volumetric capacity, then if you look at compressed gas, even going up to 700 bar, you are at, for the fluid, um, you're stuck at about 40 uh, grams of hydrogen per litre. Whereas if you go up to metal hydrides, you're into sort of 100 grams per uh, litre of storage. So there's a big potential um, volume saving, um, but you need to be able to target systems and applications that can tolerate extra weight, because you'll see that with some of these alloys, then they are heavier. These are just the material properties. So there'll be a, a, a penalty also for when you take into account the containment for the materials. So the types of applications that we're looking at and starting to do some work with um, partners around is niche applications like forklifts, heavy uh, goods vehicles, so with trucks. Uh, and one of the uh, projects that we're doing, um, I'll come on to in a moment, is looking at a truck. This is the Hyundai hydrogen truck. This does use compressed gas at the moment. All of these examples do use compressed gas. But what we want to do is convert them over to metal hydrides. Um, it could also be used for off-highway vehicles. So from JCB, interestingly, with the two vehicles here, the um, uh, this construction vehicle, then actually that's using a fuel cell. Their more recent uh, vehicle is using internal combustion engine. Um, but with both of these heavier applications, there's potential for metal hydrides to be utilized on board those vehicles. These vehicles have ballast on board as well. So it does mean that um, you're not compromising the vehicle, you're just replacing some of the, uh, the ballast that would already be there with the storage solution. Uh, with trains, the Hydroflex here, again, that's using compressed storage at 350 bar, but there's opportunity because there needs to be a certain amount of weight to provide the traction of, that the engine uh, requires. And then um, the one um, application that we've got on here that does use solid state storage, this is from University of Bor uh, Birmingham um, and the hydrogen barge that they have. And that uses uh, that hydroloy C alloy that I was talking about before uh, on board the vehicle, uh, powering the fuel cells for the hydrogen barge. So um, one of the projects that we have at uh, Nottingham that has just started is called H2 Cool. Uh, and this is looking at a uh, cargo trucks, actually refrigeration cargo trucks. The concept here is that we're not too worried what the engine is for the truck. It could be a fuel cell. It could be an internal combustion engine. We're using a metal hydride store that's delivering hydrogen to that engine. But the, the smart thing we're doing is uh, designing the metal hydride so that as it is releasing the hydrogen, remember I said that the bed itself cools. So you've actually got cooling power happening as well from that endotherm. So from the endothermic cooling, uh, that can provide all of the refrigeration power 
that a normal refrigeration truck uh, requires. And so that actually means that you're helping to improve the efficiency of the truck because no extra energy is being required for refrigeration. You're utilizing the endothermic effect of hydrogen release from the store to provide the cooling. Uh, and then the hydrogen itself, the hydrogen gas, is the energy contained there is only being used for motive power. So uh, with that project, uh, we're looking at the design of those uh, alloys so that they give us the cooling required along with delivering the hydrogen and how you then integrate the cooling for um, the into that metal hydride store. And then um, along with the material design and synthesis, we uh, by the end of the project, which just started last end of last year, we hope to have a, a demonstration prototype for that dual store. So the last one's just on compression. And um, with a metal hydride compressor, then again, what we're looking at is taking hydrogen from an electrolyzer that could be uh, at uh, 15 bar, some electrolyzers are going up to 80 bar. Um, and depending on what the input pressure is, then we would either need a single, double or treble, uh, triple stage compressor if we want to deliver hydrogen at 20 bar, 350 bar delivery, or even 800 bar delivery. The concept is that we are utilizing that Van Hoff relationship. So with this example of a two-stage compressor, we're taking hydrogen from the electrolyzer, let's say that's at 30 bar. The first stage compressor, if we heat up and go through sort of a 100 degree cycle, then um, that means that we can take the pressure up to about 65 bar transfer the 65 bar across to the second stage compressor. And again, by providing that same heat cycle of about 100 degree cycle, then we can get up to 350 bar. If we wanted at 800 bar, we could go into a third stage. Again, with just 100 degrees uh, heat cycling, then we can take the hydrogen up to um, 700 bar. So with these systems, then actually what we've got is relatively small compressors uh, stages and the uh, engineering uh, challenge there is getting heat in and out of the store quickly uh, because we want to be able to heat it up by 100 degrees and then take the temperature down again by 100 degrees so that we can rapidly cycle those modules and go through the various um, cycling stages. Advantages are that all we're using is heat for the compression. It means that it is a relatively quiet technology uh, and there are no mechanical moving parts so from the maintenance side, then uh, that makes it a uh, more durable and resilient system, which is uh, just to compare it with the mechanical compressors, then you know, all the advantages uh, of solid state compression in comparison to mechanical compressors that tend to be noisy. They also have quite high maintenance costs um, because of the wear and tear from that mechanical compression. So just to finish off then, um, hopefully I have uh, convinced you that there are alternatives to compressed uh, gas storage for a variety of applications related to transport with a refueling infrastructure, but also onboard vehicles. Metal hydrides isn't right for all applications. It's not right for uh, small and light vehicles, but um, with heavier vehicles, uh, then there is real opportunity there. And also, um, that there's opportunity to utilize a metal hydride store, not just hydrogen for driving the vehicle round, but also that you can utilize the endothermic refrigeration effect uh, within the vehicle as, as well, which helps to improve the efficiency of the vehicle. And then the last one was use of metal hydrides as a compressor. And the last thing then is just to thank you for listening. Okay, thanks very much for a great presentation, Gavin.